Hello, I'm Dr. Nordquist, and this is a presentation. It's the beginning of a series. This will be the first one. Uh, the series is on why do I get sick? And it's for my patients and then whoever um, views this over the next few years or whatever that's interested in ultimate health and understanding the conditions that allow us to get sick and a lot of my patients have listened to me over the last 20 years and have heard bits and parts of this stuff. But now I'm going to do a short 30 minute um, uh, sections on this and simplify each part of this. And I'm not sure how many sessions this will take, but it will probably take 20 or 30 sessions over the next few months. So when you're watching this on YouTube, uh, make sure you subscribe and hit the, the thumbs up so that we get more views and we see if we can get this information out so that we can stop being afraid of viruses and that sort of thing and live a long, healthy life. The last year has been a very difficult year because of COVID-19. And it's very interesting that I had just about finished my book on viruses and then COVID-19 came just before I was going to publish it. So all I had to do was add the COVID-19 virus to the book. And then uh, in the middle of the pandemic, uh, about six months ago, I published the book. And this book goes over all the things that we're going to be talking about in this lecture. All the proceeds, like if you want to go buy the book, it's got a lot of color photographs in it. The book itself is a little expensive, but you can download the the um, e version of the book for you know very very little cost and then you have a copy of it but if you don't want to buy the book then uh, just stay uh, with this series of little lectures and I'm going to go over the whole thing bit by bit and this will probably include a lot more than what's in the book but over the last year with the COVID we've learned a huge amount of why the people that died of COVID died and we understand that people that had pre-existing conditions, particularly diabetes and obesity, but also included all the other uh, chronic diseases. And over this lecture series, you're going to find out that all these chronic diseases are related to a few things that are very easy to diagnose and they're very easy to prevent. But it takes a, an effort for each patient to make that commitment to being healthy. And we're going to have a program in our office, and I'll give you that information as to how to contact us, as to how to get into the program that we've designed to help you be healthy. This includes uh, the chronic diseases we're talking about include heart disease, diabetes, Alzheimer's disease, a myriad of other uh, neurologic diseases, and most other chronic diseases are all related to a few things that occur because of we really feel it's certain bacteria in the mouth causes immune suppression and also cognitive or um, intelligence decline. So over this period of time that um, we take this out bit by bit over a period of time, we hope that you'll understand the underlying cause and then can make the changes in your life that would result in not only avoiding the disease in the first place, but if you have these diabetes and some of these uh, chronic diseases, we can over time start to reverse these so that you don't have to be afraid of dying of a heart attack. And maybe if you're at a certain point, we can um, reduce the symptoms of diabetes. And definitely we have to uh, decrease our weight. Obesity is definitely a, a factor that allows us to be vulnerable to to viruses and COVID-19 isn't the only one. As you'll find out, um, even in this presentation, I'm gonna show several viruses that are probably more problematic than the COVID-19. But if your immune system is robust, then you're safe. So, well, we're gonna get started on this and um, we're gonna find out the relationship between uh, the Immune suppression caused by chronic disease that basically come from the mouth or the bacteria in the mouth. And it's, it calls it, it's an imbalance of bacteria in the mouth. 
And we're going to relate that to why that makes you vulnerable to virus infections. And um, I'm going to go over the history of how this um, culminated, all this research culminated, 20 years of research and thousands and thousands of hours of research has culminated in this last book and how I can now come and describe it to you and have you understand it in simple terms so that you can be able to make changes in your life. So let's get started. This is our slide presentation now and the subject is why do I get sick? It's the series and we hope to by the time we get done with this, you'll understand and be able to, re to avoid getting sick and if you get sick and how to reverse it. The first uh, lecture, which is this one, is just going to be the basic uh, story of discovery and how in the last 20 years I came up or uh, this whole concept uh, dawned on me. It's very important to understand how long it took and, and how complicated it was and for me to put it together over about 20 years. Basically, the underlying cause of chronic disease and, and the problems that um, we could see with our patients that had implant dentistry problems. Um, I started implant dentistry in 1986, and by 1987, 1998, I was doing the worst of the worst cases. And most of these cases didn't have very much bone, so we end up um, developing a manufacturing process for implants with patients that had very little bone. But having little bone, they had very few teeth as well. And so the more we noticed that uh, the long um, period of time that they'd be with, without teeth, the worse their chronic disease or the more chronic diseases they would have, such as diabetes, heart disease, and various stages of neurologic diseases. So back early in the 90s, I was being at a lecture on what we call multiple tooth syndrome. And we noticed that all our patients that had enough teeth to do these complicated procedures had diabetes, heart disease, and neurologic problems. And the more missing teeth, the more infection, and the more implant problems we had with these patients. So we also, as the research continued through the many years, we began to figure it out. And um, the more missing teeth, we now pretty much confirm that it produces, or we, as we go through the lecture, you'll find out that certain bacteria called spirochetes actually commandeer the immune system to depress the immune system. And it seems to be the modulation part of the immune system that is affected. And we'll see how this modulation part of the immune system that's not functioning properly allows viruses to basically kill you. And also we notice that the more missing teeth, the more cognitive or intelligent decline our patients had in an inability to understand what was going on with their mouth and if they had problems with their implants, they could not process the fact that there was a failure and why would it fail and even though they're informed that implants can fail or even when they didn't fail, why couldn't we get the teeth exactly the way their natural teeth would? They just couldn't process that information. So this is uh, over a long period of time which um, the problems with that made forced me to basically sell everything I had to put my entire effort right around the year 2000 into this discovery process to come up with these books that I'm going to discuss. About the 1996 or 97 is when the story really got interesting. In fact, is from that point to this day, it's been very exciting. It's a, a research high that only researchers discover when they make great discoveries. And to be honest with you, I can't take a lot of credit for it because what happened in my office in probably 2007 is um, I'd already began to suspect certain bacteria and I suspected things, but nothing had been gelling in my mind. And I'd gone since 2000 up to that point, not making any progress at all in understanding the chronic disease process. So in 2007, as I was walking down in my office, the front office, all of a sudden I had this download in my brain, incredible download. 
And I turned on my heel and went back to my computer in my office, my private office, and turned my computer on and just outlined all of that downloaded in my brain. Uh, the next weekend, I was up at UCLA in their, their regular library. And the following weekend, I was in their, their older archives and came up with a, a foot stack, uh, stack of copied papers. And the following weekend, I, would, I had a planned vacation in Cabo for two weeks to write four papers on basically implant problems. And so during that first uh, week in that time period, I finished the four papers. And then the second week, I pulled out the copied uh, journal articles from UCLA and began going through them. And within a day, I realized that uh, the implant problems and and what downloaded in the brain is what causes chronic disease was the makings of a book. And so basically, the stealth killer, which you see my first book published in 2009, um, was basically just the culmination of all that had downloaded and it got verified by all, peer, all the peer review literature that I had studied. And um, it was very exciting at the time to be able to publish this and get insight into what was causing the problems that I had in implant dentistry. And then the root cause was chronic disease. And it's, uh, it was a relationship that was very similar to syphilis and Lyme disease. And so as this discovery went on, um, the next book was published was The Silent Saboteurs. And after 40 years of not um, communicating with my research advisor, Dr. David Krutchkoff, we reconnected because of his influence in my life to be able to have uh, been my mentor in my postgraduate program that gave me a master's degree in oral biology with a major in oral and general pathology. So we collaborated on the book, The Silent Saboteurs, and some of the top names in dentistry and medicine endorsed uh, this book, this highly endorsed book. And dentistry was beginning to accept the concepts that uh, Lyme disease, syphilis, and periodontal disease were related to what we call spirochetes, a uh, bacteria called spirochetes. And that's what this uh, silent saboteurs. And then all the problems we had with implants uh, is documented in Legalized Crime Dental Dentistry Turf Wars book um, and this relationship to chronic disease. And it goes over about 40 lawsuits, most of which I served as an expert witness, but some are lawsuits that I had to suffer through. But during all those years of suffering through that and uh, realizing I had to sell everything I have and put everything I had into the effort to try to find out what was causing the problems resulted in great discovery but it cost me almost everything I had financially at the time. And all this research, I put everything I have into it after all these years. The final book, as I mentioned earlier, was completely finished just prior to the COVID-19. And all I had to do was just change the title and basically add the COVID-19. And then what we've learned over the last, or for the first six months into the COVID-19 is uh, documented as book two. And this book is got color all the way through color photographs and it's um, documents all anybody would need to be able to understand chronic disease and how viruses and chronic disease work together. And then in the end, it gives you what you do and all the things that you can do to avoid the diseases and also reverse the diseases. What I want to go over is, is how the dental profession is actually supporting the subject. I've had great opportunities to, to lecture, do many uh, webinars and seminars on the subject over the last 10 years. In 2018, we started to uh, realize that there was a relationship between uh, the various chronic diseases and then their relationship to what's called mad cow disease. And there's real significance in this. And I had uh, written a paper concerning this subject uh, for Dentistry Today, which is one of our major publications for uh, general dentists. It goes into every general dentist's office. But anyway, I wrote a letter to the editor and I said, I think this article 
is probably going to be one of the most significant articles that you've published or may ever publish because of its significance to dentistry. And they published that article within six weeks, which is quite amazing that they realized how important this subject was. And very shortly thereafter that this was published, we connected with the American Academy of Oral Systemic Health, which is the premier organization that's relating the oral health with the systemic diseases. And I did a webinar for this group and um, it was a very highly attended and highly uh, acclaimed lecture that went over what, what we call the relationship with what we call prion diseases. Mad cow disease is a prion disease, but it seems that most chronic diseases are also prion diseases. And as we go through this lecture, you'll learn what the significance of this article is. And right in that same time frame, um, the biofilm factor, um, Ryan Nolan called and wanted to do a, a, um, a podcast for me. And so we got started, went on for an hour and a half on this subject. And you can actually, as you, you can go to this, um, the biofilmfactor.com and you can listen to this hour and a half discussion if you're that interested. Now we're going to go over some of the just the viruses that we're going to talk about and ask the question why they didn't kill us, kill us all. And what was the factors that allowed us to survive this? Uh, the first virus we're going to discuss and probably take one or two or three sessions to get through the, uh, the COVID-19 or the Wuhan uh, coronavirus. It's, it's fairly complex and it's going to take some time for you to understand exactly what happened over the last year. I've never seen anything that uh, was so controversial and there was so much misinformation and it seemed like uh, we had to button up our lips about it because if it didn't go with the narrative that um, you're ridiculed because of not following the, uh, the narrative of the media or whatever, and sometimes ignoring what the literature was all about. And we'll discuss that in quite a bit of detail. Here I show a diagram of the virus and how similar it is to the actual, to the SARS virus and also to a, a rat virus. And also it shows that uh, there were some um, cassettes um, on the S protein, which is those little projections outside the virus that actually bond to this um, to the human cells um, and how closely related they were to the HV or the AIDS viruses and it is what made this virus so um, so initially so virulent and why it killed so many people uh, so we're going to discuss that how that uh, those things that were added in by man were actually lopped off over time to make the virus less uh, a killer and more like the common cold. We'll discuss that. So why didn't we all die of COVID-19? A lot of people did die, but why didn't we all get it and die? We're going to discuss that. Now, there's a lot of evidence that the herpes virus, the cold sore virus actually has something to do with Alzheimer's disease. And so we will discuss how that virus um, gets into the brain and, and what its influence and is it really a cause of Alzheimer's disease or not. Uh, with the herpes simplex virus number one, which is oral, it starts out on the lip and that's probably how you catch it in the first place from someone you've kissed or maybe you uh, hit the virus with your fingers and put your fingers on your lips. And then the virus migrates from there into the uh, nerves. It goes up under the, the base of the brain through what we call the trigeminal nerve. And there it sits dormant. And when it comes out of dormancy and it's immune suppression that actually causes that. And when we get done with this lecture series, you'll understand why immune suppression uh, uh, facilitates other viruses and other bacteria in, uh, to become virulent themselves and actually contribute to 
being more sick and even contribute to death. So all these little things will become much more clear once we get done with this lecture series. So why haven't we all died from the herpes and uh, Alzheimer's disease? We'll, we'll figure that one out. Probably the most significant virus that we're going to discuss, and we'll discuss it in great detail. Uh, Laura Manulites is one of the top researchers in the world on viruses, and uh, she's the one just recently, in very recent publications, have, have alerted us to this particular virus, and it's called the Sphinx virus. It's a slow, progressive, hidden, infectious of various X latency, the Sphinx. And these viruses are very, very small, and um, they're virus particles. And, um, and uh, she thinks that these are related to what's called beta amyloid, which is the hallmark of Alzheimer's disease and diabetes. It's what seems to be uh, prevalent in the lesions. But we now know that the beta amyloid really is the body's reaction to these viruses. And before we get done with the lecture series, you'll understand that in much more detail because I, it's really hard. This, this whole subject is too complex uh, to simplify it in just a few minutes. So it's going to take a lecture or two on this particular virus for you to, to understand it. A preview of what we're going to discuss when we do this is uh, we just mentioned beta amyloid. And so beta amyloid here is related to Alzheimer's disease and then the human version of mad cow disease and the experimental version of mad cow disease. And this, the significance of this is quite dramatic for us in dentistry and medicine, especially those that do surgery, because the viruses that cause mad cow disease are encapsulated and they're very difficult to sterilize. So it creates a big problem for us in medicine. And we'll discuss that as we go along in this series. So if it's true that the Sphinx virus is involved with chronic diseases, and we'll give you some examples here, it's heart disease, cancer, uh, respiratory diseases, stroke, Alzheimer's disease, and diabetes. So when you add up all the deaths from the various uh, chronic diseases, it adds up to a very large number. Um, 1,758,000. 117. If you compare that to the deaths that uh, as of 10-10-2020 was 214,000 people have died from that. But when you take into account that in the COVID-19, if you die of diabetes and you had COVID, then you're counted. So real in reality, the COVID-19 probably didn't kill them. It was a diabetes or the heart disease or whatever. So the COVID-19 specifically didn't do it, but it kicked them over and they had it concurrent so that um, they actually added that in the tally. So why haven't we all died from this Sphinx virus? This again, we're going to discuss in greater detail as we move along and understanding you know, how we avoid diseases and if we have the diseases, how to reverse them. This is a, a very recent virus that um, has been discovered, or the problems with this virus has recently been discovered. And this particular virus, the coronavirus, um, it's found in Alzheimer's disease, almost 100% of the studies, so it goes along with Alzheimer's. Again, it's a small size uh, with a capsid um, that's very high protected and hard to sterilize. So the coronavirus um, is a class. Members cause significant health uh, issues such as poliomyelitis, hepatitis A, and foot and mouth disease. And also the author of this particular paper um, claims it was a contaminant to a significant number of cell cultures used to produce vaccines. So. It's um, very, pro very problematic in the fact that um, this virus is so small and it's just been recently found that it makes it very difficult to produce vaccines because what about other viruses similar to that? But the thing it is, um, we need to have an immune system that can you know, handle all these various things. And my lecture series is gonna show exactly how to have an immune system uh, so that none of these viruses can touch you. 
So the question again I'm going to ask is, why haven't we all died from the coronavirus? This is the last of the, the viruses, and we'll discuss this in greater detail as we go. But it's called the XMRV virus. And this virus was uh, discovered by Mikovits, a very famous biologist. And uh, she wrote two books on the subject, The Plague of Corruption and, and Plague. And when this virus was found, it, it caused so much controversy in the field of biology that, that she was discredited, she was put in jail. Uh, to this day, she can't get a job. But if you read her books and hear her story, you need to hear her story because if you go on the internet, you'll find that she's been discredited in such a terrible way. But all the research she did was later confirmed by other researchers that it was true because this virus is like Lyme disease on steroids. And so you can't um, take, the, take this thing lightly, this virus. It, it, it's very bad when you get it. And the whole key to not having it is a robust immune system. And we're going to go through in great detail as to what you need to do to, to boost your immune system so you're not vulnerable to any of these viruses. So obviously, why haven't we all died from this particular MXRV virus? And we'll discuss it. So when we boil down the whole subject and, and when we get to the end of the lecture that you understand that bacteria and viruses work together both in health and also in disease. And it, an imbalance in, in any one of these bacteria can cause problems. And somehow in our modern world, things have gotten out of balance. And we can see it every day. And you watch the news and you wonder if if there's a, a cognitive decline, it's gone, this cognitive decline or intelligence uh, just defies uh, explanation how people could understand the way they do, but it's a disease that has caused the brains not to function properly. So we're in a, uh, a pandemic of, of um, misunderstanding and not uh, being able to to analyze properly, and it's the disease process. And it's caused from a, a, a basically imbalance in bacteria and viruses, and then it gets into the tissue in the body. And in the brain, it causes various neurologic problems. And intelligence is a neurologic problem, so over time. Uh, Brasler, in his book, uh, Missing Microbes, is the, the book that kind of uh, tip the scales for me in understanding what this whole balance is and how we messed it up in our modern age. So this concludes this lecture, and um, I look forward to the next one. And again, we're going to break it down, each one. Uh, you didn't understand any of these viruses at this point, but as we break down each one, uh, when we discuss it, you begin to understand you know, what you need to do on a daily basis to be able to have your immune system tip top so that when any of these come along, even if you get the vaccine, uh, which I think is probably people with diabetes and high risk should get it. But the thing is the vaccine may not cover the next one, but a, um, a robust immune system will. So our whole purpose in, in my practice in San Diego is to take my patients, educate them, show them step by step what they need to do at home um, and their diet, um, their lifestyle, um, everything that you need to do to boost your immune system. Because if your immune system is weak or if your bacteria and viruses are out of balance, if your uh, immune system is can't modulate and it only reacts violently to everything, then you're going to have a problem. But over time, we can... Uh, teach you the things that you need to do so that you can avoid some of these things that I've been talking about today. So I'll see you next time. Make sure you share this and also put a thumbs up for me. I appreciate it. Thank you very much.